So I'm sure many of you guys are aware of the popular internet game called Agario, which is actually what I'm playing right now. So I thought it'd be a cool idea as I used to play this game a ton to try to duplicate it using Python, Sockets, and the module Pygame, and allow a bunch of my friends and actually students to play against each other on a local network or an external server. So I'm going to show you guys how I created that game, what it looks like, and how you guys can mess around with the project at home. Alright, so this is the game running right now on my computer. Now it's difficult to show you this playing with a bunch of people at once, but I will put up some footage from actually when I was running this in the classroom with a bunch of my students. But anyways, you guys can see here kind of how this works. It's obviously not nearly as advanced as the last version of the game that I was showing you, but this is kind of my attempt to make Agario in Python. Now, this is probably maybe like six or seven hours of work, so nothing too crazy, and I can definitely add a ton of stuff to it. But for now, I decided to keep it simple and just get a working kind of prototype anyway. Uh, prototype going here so you can see that I have two clients on my computer and one of them is test player the other one is Tim and obviously if test player goes inside of Tim Tim will gain all of his mass and then he will respawn uh, and that's kind of the gist of the game what you're trying to do is get as large as possible and you can do that obviously by eating other players or by collecting all of these dots now the way that I kind of made this game balance is that the bigger you get the slower you are so it's much more difficult to move around I also made it so that the bigger you are the faster you lose mass so you'll notice in the server code here that we have all of these different kind of log messages coming in so the server was starting connection happened uh, another connection happened, Tim's mass is depleting, test player's mass is depleting, but the speed at which your mass depletes uh, depends on your size. So if you are, you know, much bigger, you're going to lose mass much faster. And that's kind of the way that I tried to balance this. Now, obviously, this window is not massive, which means that when you have a ton of people playing at once, well, um, you can get someone that gets very large and traps people essentially through different halves of the game. So there's a lot of work to do, but I think this is kind of cool. And I'm going to show you guys some footage of, well, my students playing this while I kind of explain why I even wanted to make this in the first place. So for those of you that don't know, I actually teach coding in a classroom in the summer. And that's what all this footage is from here. And I apologize for the poor quality, but it's just filmed on my iPhone as that's all I could really do while I was there. Uh, but anyways, what I do is I teach kids coding. And when we have breaks, I like to show them some of the stuff that I made and kind of inspire them and give them some ideas on stuff that they can do. So I thought it'd be a really cool idea to get them all to connect and play this game against each other. Um, and that's exactly what we're doing here. And you can see that some of them were having a lot of fun and they were connecting and feeding each other and teaming up uh, and they really enjoyed the game. And it was kind of almost bad that I showed them cause they were just begging to play it the entire week. So the way that I made this game as well, um, a little bit different from the real Agario is rounds last five minutes. So as soon as you hit five minutes, uh, the game freezes, you can no longer eat people, you can no longer collect dots, all you can do is move around, and then you can have a look at the scoreboard and see who was in first. So now that we kind of understand how the game works and what it is I actually created, let me walk you guys through kind of the back end of this and how I actually did it in case any of you are interested, and I'll also show you how you can run it and kind of some of the limitations and th problems that I'm running into. And you know, it, feel free to help me out with this and contribute to the GitHub repo that is in the description down below. If you have any fixes or things you want to add to the game, and that could be a cool kind of community thing we can do uh, with this. All right, so now time to talk about how this actually works. So this right here is the GitHub repo for the project. And if you're interested in looking at it, downloading it, or even playing the project yourself, what you can do is simply click the link in the description for my GitHub, find this repository and play with the code. So anyways, I'm going to kind of walk you through how this works so that you guys know how to modify it so you can actually use it at home. So this works on a client server system using something called sockets. Now I'm going to walk you through this, uh, which is a brief little drawing here. So I'm going to represent the server within blue here with an S. Now the server you can kind of think of as like the heart of the game. And this is what's handling kind of all of the information. It's handling all of the connections and it's handling sending information to and from the client. So receiving information from the client and sending it back to the other clients. Now, what is a client? Well, a client is just kind of like the game running. So when you saw that Pi game window there, that was the client. So I'm just going to draw three clients here to kind of get you guys an idea of how this really works. 
So the clients have a series of commands that they can send to the server and based on what they send, they're going to receive back information. Now that information might be something like the client score. It might be something like other players positions, right? Um, that's the kind of information you might be getting. Now in this case, the type of um, information I'm sending is commands and what these commands are, are just strings that say certain things. So the first one is called uh, get, okay? And get simply means, excuse my handwriting here, I have to plug in this cord because it's going to die. Um, get just means give me all the information for the game. And the information for the game is like, where are all those little bubbles? Where is other players position? Where is, how big is everybody? How fast is everybody? Like all of that is the information that we need. And that's going to be sent back to us in a dictionary. So say like, this is the command and this is what we get back. So what we get back is a list of all of the players. So we have like, Inside of this dictionary, we have a list. We have one for players. We have one for all those little orbs and balls. And then we have another one, I believe, for the time. Ah, that's what it is. So how much time is left in the game? Because I don't know if I explained this, but essentially the game lasts for five minutes. And after the end of five minutes, um, you can't eat people. You can't get any larger. You can't get any smaller. And what happens is you can just have a look at the scoreboard and see kind of who won that round. So anyways, this is kind of the information we get back when we say get. The other command that we have is move. Now what move does is it actually will send the position that each client moved to. So typically the command that we're going to be using a lot is called move. Now what move is again, we're just sending where we move. So maybe we move to position 50, 50 on the screen. We're going to send that to the server and we're going to get back this same list. So right here, we're going to get back the same thing as up here when we send move. So you can kind of get the point here. What's happening is each client is going to be sending information to the server and depending on what kind of information it sends, it's going to get some information back. Now what it's going to do once it gets that information is kind of break it up, look at it, and then display that information onto the screen so that we can see it. And that's happening between all of the clients and all of the, um, yeah, between all of the clients to the server multiple times per second, right? So that means our server has to be as fast as possible to be able to handle all of this going on at once. Now, the last command that we can send is known as ID, and this simply returns to us what player ID we are. Now, the ID is just a number that represents which player because what sometimes will happen is if you have players with the same name, you can't just use that as the ID. So I've just created a very arbitrary number system so that each player has an ID. And the reason you need that is because when you join the server, the server is going to send back to you this player list that's going to have like zero, one, two, three for all the player IDs. So you have to know which one you are. So you know, you know, which one you're going to be moving, um, where you're going to put the name, like just all of that kind of stuff. So that's kind of the gist of how this works. So anyways, let me close this now um, and let's actually go and dig into the code just a little bit. I'm going to show you what you need to modify to make this work. So first thing we're going to do if we want to actually run this is just go to CMD and type IP config. Now here you're going to be looking for your IPv4 address. This is if you're going to be running on a local network. So mine is 192.168.1.162. Now I've actually made this easier for you, but what you usually have to do is find this on the server machine. So whatever machine you're going to be running the server on, you're going to want to know this number. Now, fortunately for you guys, what I've actually done is I've coded it such that when you run the server, it automatically figures out what IP address you're on and it just runs the server on that IP. So I'll show you here if I can find um, where this code is. So Agario, I go to CMD Python server.py you can see it says server started with local ip 192.168.162 so now we're going to copy this number and we're going to paste this now for our game so we're going to go inside of our game code here actually not our game code sorry our client code and we're going to click edit and what we're going to do is we're going to look for a field inside of this init here that says host now host is going to be what we're connecting to so all we have to do is change this number to be the same as our server and once we've done that, we're actually set and we're good to go. And that's all we need to do to make this game work on any machine. So what you're going to do then is run the server code on the fastest machine that you have. Ideally, make sure it's on the same network as all your other machines. And then on all your other machines, you're just going to run game. Make sure that client has that same IP address inside of, you know, that little field that I just showed you. And then it'll be able to connect and uh, and play and do all of that fun stuff. Now, if you're looking to use this over a 
public network or you want like other people to be able to connect um, from different computers around the world on different networks, what you're going to do is just go on Google and just search up my IP address. Now that's going to give you your public IP address and you're going to run the code now from a public IP address. Now I don't recommend this because that's going to mean that other people are going to have your public IP address. But if you want to do that, you're welcome to. So run it using your public IP address. That means you're just going to change the server to run on the public IP and you're going to change the client to run on the public IP as well. So with that being said, that is kind of how this game works and operates. Um, I thought it was something that was really interesting and I had a lot of fun making this. If you want to look into the code and kind of see why this works, I've uh, commented it quite a bit. So you should be able to understand what most of this is doing and, you know, see if you can create something similar to it as well. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more. And I'd love to hear if any of you guys are actually going to be using this project uh, and what you thought of it in the comments down below.